One of the biggest frustrations many people have with their bandsaw is that they can't cut straight using their fence. If your blade tends to drift away from the line, you've likely been told to angle your fence to compensate for that drift. But tweaking the fence doesn't solve the problem, it only hides it. And in the process, you create other issues. If you take the time to properly set up your saw, it'll perform better in every way, including cutting straight without a drift. This isn't a difficult process, and it can really help even older and lower end machines. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through it. First, unplug the saw. You'll be putting your fingers in all sorts of places that they would have no business in if that saw was connected to a power source. Now I'm assuming that you have a sharp, undamaged blade. A dull blade, or one that has had the set in the teeth damaged because of improper setup, is not gonna cut straight, no matter what you do to your saw. So that's the first thing I would look into. Make sure your blade is not dull or damaged. Now let's talk tracking. I like to center my blade on the upper wheel. The tire of a bandsaw's wheel is crowned. If the blade is set too far forward on that crown, it'll twist to the left. If the blade is set too far back, it will twist to the right. That's why virtually all manuals say to center the blade on the wheel. That said, some prefer to intentionally offset their blade way back so that the teeth themselves are centered at the apex of the crown. Their reasoning is they want to fully support the toothed edge of the blade, which is the critical part because that's what does the cutting. In my experience, both these methods work. As long as your blade is not so wide that it hangs off the back of the wheel when you center the teeth, three quarter inch and larger blades may do that. What won't work though is anything in between. You can't have the blade just slightly off center. You either have to center the blade fully on the wheel or center the teeth of the blade fully on the wheel. Anything in between is going to lead to drift. Keep in mind that I'm talking about the upper wheel. It doesn't matter how the blade tracks on the lower wheel as long as it's fully on the tire and not hanging off the side. The crown on the lower wheel is far enough from the cutting surface that it's not going to affect the cut. At this point, my blade has been snug but not fully tight. The next step is to properly tension it. Now many saws have built-in gauges for this purpose, and some are reasonably accurate, others not so much. I just use my finger. I do this test on the left side of the blade so it won't be affected by the guides. I just push with my finger a few inches below the upper wheel. I want to see no more than a quarter inch of deflection without pressing so hard that the tip of my finger turns white. After I adjust the tension, I double check how the blade is tracking on the wheel, just in case that affected it, and now I move on to the guides. Whether you have blocks or bearings, this process is essentially going to be the same, so don't be turned off because I'm adjusting bearings. It will work with your blocks as well. First, set the guides so they are just behind the gullets between the blade's teeth. This is important because just ahead of the gullet, each tooth is bent slightly outward, alternating from right to left. This is called the tooth set, and your guides must be kept just behind the gullets so they won't damage the set and ruin the blade. That's what I meant when I said that damaged blades won't cut straight. If you're setting your guides right next to the teeth, you may have damaged your blade. And if it's still not cutting straight after you go through this setup, you may need a new blade. Next, we'll adjust the distance between the guides and the sides of the blade. This can be a fidgety process depending on your saw. This particular saw is easy to adjust because of how the guides are designed. The goal is to get them as close to the blade as possible without touching it. Some people like to use a dollar bill or a piece of paper as a spacer. That may be useful if your saw has guide blocks rather than bearings because it can be difficult to see if those blocks are slightly too close and the blade is just barely skimming the surface, while bearings will visibly turn if they aren't set correctly. The thrust bearing behind the blade should be set the same way, as close as possible to the blade without making contact. What I mean is it should not spin when you rotate the saw's upper wheel by hand, but a little pressure with your fingertip on a sharp tooth should engage that thrust bearing. If it hurts to make that bearing spin, it's set too far away. Unlike the lower wheel, the lower guides are close enough to the cutting surface to affect how the blade works, so adjust them just as you did the upper guides. 
Now these are the routine setup steps which you will make whenever you change your blade and they alone will most likely solve your drifting problems but occasionally you may have to adjust the fence and the table as well. Some say you should adjust the fence parallel to the blade. I disagree. You should adjust the fence parallel to the miter slot, then adjust the table so both the fence and the miter slot become parallel to the blade. How your fence adjusts depends on your saw, but I can tell when mine is parallel to the miter slot by feel, or I might use a combination square in the miter track just as I would if I was adjusting my table saw's fence. Once the fence and the miter slot are aligned with each other, you can loosen the bolts or the knobs beneath the table and rotate everything into alignment with the blade. There are jigs for this, and I'll link to one below this video, but you can also do it with some test cuts. Using your rip fence, rip about an inch or so into the end of a scrap of wood and then snap the saw. Because of the set of the teeth, the kerf will be a bit wider than the thickness of the blade. So note if the back of the blade is rubbing on one side of the kerf or the other. From the perspective of standing behind the saw, if it's rubbing on the right side of the kerf, the table must be rotated counterclockwise. If on the other hand, from the perspective of standing behind the saw, the blade is rubbing on the left side of the kerf, the table must be rotated clockwise. Make small adjustments and a few test cuts until the back of the blade remains centered in the kerf all the way through the cut. Some tables might come out of adjustment when you tilt them for making bevel cuts, or if you move the saw by grabbing a hold of the table and pulling on it. So check it once in a while and make these corrections as needed. Adjusting the table like this is better than adjusting the fence to compensate for drift because it actually solves the problem rather than covering it up, and it aligns both the fence and the miter slot to the blade at the same time. Finally, be sure your blade guides are set just above the work as you cut. If they're way up here, not only are you exposing yourself to a lot of unguarded blade, but the blade guides can't properly guide the blade unless they're down close to the cut. I hope this little tutorial straightens out your bandsaw just like it did mine. See you next time. As the builders behind some of the top brands in the industry, Harvey Machinery has for decades been letting others take credit for their innovation. Now they've developed their own line of saws with the quality and features once reserved only for professional shops. The woodworking world is officially on notice. Harvey Machinery will be in the shadows no longer.